We just got back from a, a seven-night Alaska cruise aboard Discovery Princess. This is Princess Cruise's newest ship, and today we're going to talk about it. Hey cruisers, welcome back to another Cruise Report Cruise Review. Now today we're going to talk about Discovery Princess and the seven nights we just spent in Alaska aboard that ship. Quick background on us. Uh, we've been reviewing cruises for 20 years at CruiseReport.com and this was our 136th cruise and our 107th ship that we've reviewed. I think we've been on 39 different cruise lines. Some of them aren't even in business anymore. <laughs> so um, just just a little quick background on us, not saying that. Only, only giving you that as a point of reference uh, to let you know that we've been on a variety of different ships, variety of different cruise lines, and we have a pretty broad experience uh, when we review these ships. Uh, that's a little different from someone that maybe has been on 8 or 10 or 15 cruises on two or three cruise lines because they just don't have that that broader range. doesn't mean their information is not valuable. Uh, it's just to give you a little bit of background on us. Now, just to be clear and to be right up front, I want to let you know that Princess Cruises did invite us on this cruise as their guest. So I don't want you to be under any false pretense that we paid for this cruise. Princess is not sponsoring this video. They didn't pay us to go on the cruise. They didn't pay us to do this video. Uh, they have no idea what I'm going to say. They had no input into the content of this video. Just so you know, we're going to do this like we always do. I'm going to tell you what I liked about this cruise and I'm going to tell you what I didn't like about this cruise. Now, we do tend to review these ships from the perspective of an adult couple traveling as a couple. Uh, we don't travel with a family. We don't have kids. So if you're looking for that kind of information, I think you might want to seek out a channel or uh, a blog or something where they focus more on family travel. Uh, we're really not qualified to review those parts of a ship or of a cruise line. So let's talk a little bit about what's going on here with Princess Cruises. Now, the cruise line started in 1965, and they've been sailing in Alaska since 1969. So more than 50 years of experience of cruising in Alaska, and they're pretty much considered one of the top two cruise lines sailing in Alaska. I'd say it'd be Princess and Holland America. There's a lot of cruise lines that sail to Alaska, but Princess Holland America are kind of con uh, Holland America are kind of considered the standards for comparison. Uh, Princess operates their own rail cars, so if you want to do a Denali uh, pre or post cruise extension. Uh, they not only have their own rail cars, they have their own lodges uh, or lodge that you can stay in. So they're very deeply invested in Alaska. I think they also have the second largest fleet of ships in Alaska in the summertime. So they're very knowledgeable in this space. Now, in 1976, this is when Aaron Spelling came out with the Love Boat, and that's really what kind of made Princess Cruise is famous. The Pacific Princess, you know, Gavin McLeod is Captain Stubby, and that's what everybody remembers. And they've continued with that theme today. So there is this sense or feeling or air of romance uh, surrounding a Princess Cruise that I think lasts to this day. I think when you step on board their ships, you just kind of get that feeling uh, that you had back when you watched The Love Boat. And some of us that are old enough to remember the love boat, uh, you know what I'm talking about. In 2003, Princess was acquired and P&O was acquired by Carnival Corporation. It became one of their brands. I think they have 
I don't know, 10 or 11 different cruise lines now that they own. All of the ships in 2021 were converted to medallion, what they call medallion class ships. And this is one of the things that Princess is doing uh, to sort of differentiate itself from other cruise lines in the industry. It's a very technology forward initiative. And uh, we're going to talk about medallion class in one of the sections of this review. So let's talk a little bit about Discovery Princess. This is the sixth Royal class ship in the fleet. It's also the last Royal class ship. And we're going to talk more about their most recent ship they just announced yesterday. Very exciting. It's called the Sphere class. It's going to be larger, but Discovery Princess still is 1,083 feet long. I believe it's 217 feet tall above the ocean, and it is a big ship by any standard. I'd call it a mega ship. It holds 3,630 guests, and I believe it's about 1,034 crew members. So there's that uh, you know pretty decent crew to guest ratio going on there on Discovery Princess. Now there were or what we heard, there were 3,500 or thereabouts guests on our cruise. I heard that from a couple of different crew members. I'm not sure how accurate that number is. If you were on this specific sailing, the September 4th sailing of Discovery Princess, and you have additional information on how many guests were on board, please put it in the comments down below. But 3,500, uh, that's nearly capacity. It based on 3,660 capacity, and it did at times feel crowded, but it wasn't as bad as I would have thought. Uh, where you really noticed it was at the elevators. Uh, they were pretty slow at times, and, and the crowd, that's where you noticed the crowd. Uh, the rest of the time, the only other time you really noticed it being crowded was disembarking the ship in port. Uh, we did have to wait in line a couple of days to get off the ship. It was pretty long. Other than that, there really weren't a lot of long lines. It was, uh, I'd say they do a pretty good job of crowd control on the ship. We never went to a lounge or a restaurant that felt overly crowded. So it was actually, uh, I thought, I thought uh, for a ship with that many people on it, it didn't, it didn't feel as overwhelmingly crowded as I would have expected. Now, the exterior of Discovery Princess is typical princess livery. It's the white hull with the blue sea witch flowing down the side of the ship. It's very distinctive. It's a very impressive ship when it's docked in port. And the interior is no less impressive. It's pretty much along the same lines as all the Royal class ships, and pretty much every princess ship has this continuing theme with a kind of a central area called the piazza. Uh, in this case, on this ship, it rises three decks on decks five, six, and seven. You kind of look over down into this piazza. And when you first step on board the ship, if you come in on deck five or six, you just kind of, it's almost awe inspiring. It's a really beautiful presentation. There's a, a beautiful uh, chandelier at the top of the piazza. It's, you know, all in brass and, and marble. And it's, it's just a very elegant looking ship. It's definitely an upscale feeling, premium feeling ship when you step on board. And all of the venues on the ship, I would say, are top top right. I mean, they, they it, you feel like you're on a very nice ship. You you feel like you're on a ship that's a, a step above. Now, there are three banks of elevators. There's forward, midship, and aft. There's four forward, four aft, and six midship. And as I said earlier, they can get very crowded. For some reason, I I just have trouble on princess ships knowing if I'm going forward or aft. I don't know why. I just, some ships I pick it up really quick, but for some reason, for the first two or three or four days, I find myself going aft when I think I'm going forward. And so it, it took me a while. And again, if you've sailed on one of these Royal class ships, you tell me if you have this same issue. Uh, it just, 
took me a while to figure it out. Now, there are big screens in every elevator lobby, huge uh, touch screens to help you find your way. All the public spaces on Discovery Princess are on decks 5, 6, and 7. Those are your interior decks. And then your outer decks are 16, 17, 18, and even 19 is where the little mini golf course is at the aft of the ship. Most of your lounges, restaurants, and entertainment are going to be found on decks 5, 6, and 7, those interior decks. Deck 16 is the Lido deck, and that's where you're going to find the two massive sky pools, which are in the midship portion of Deck 16. You move aft, you're going to find the World Fresh Marketplace, which has got to be the largest buffet of any cruise ship I've ever been on. It's absolutely huge. Serving lines on both sides of the ship, both port and starboard, and even some that cross over between the two sides tons of seating. And then a little further aft, you're going to find the wake view pool, which is kind of an infinity pool at the back of the ship. It's really not a pool you would swim in. It's more one of those pools you kind of stand in with a margarita and look at the sunset off the back of the ship. Now, deck 17 is the sun deck. And if you go all the way forward on deck 17, you're going to find the retreat pool and bar, and that's an adult-only area. And there's also some loungers that kind of go to that area that are one deck above that kind of look down into the retreat pool. Further back on deck 17, all the way aft, you're going to find the fitness center, which is very large. There's also the kids, uh, I think they call it Discovery, but the, that's where the kids areas are for teens and other age groups. Now, midship on deck 17, uh, you've got a lot of sun loungers that kind of look over down into the deck 16 Lido deck pool area. There's stairways where you can walk down to deck 16. Now, deck 18 is the sky deck, and that's where at the aft part of the ship, you're going to find center court, which is their sports uh, court with basketball and pickleball. I think there's a couple of uh, ping pong tables back there. There's a, a, a jogging and walking track on deck 18. If you do seven laps uh, equals one mile, it's a very nice track, actually. And then if you continue to move forward on deck 18, all the way forward, you get to our favorite place on the ship, which is the sanctuary. And I'm going to talk more about the sanctuary later on in this video. Okay, as I said earlier, all the ships in the fleet are now what they call medallion class ships. And this involves a couple of different technologies. They have what they call medallion net, which uh, I think is referring to their Wi-Fi, which Princess claims in their literature to be the fastest Wi-Fi at sea. Uh, not sure about that, but they also issue every guest a wearable little medallion. And this medallion can go around your neck. It can go in a watch band. It just pops out, and you can put it in a variety of different things that they offer on the ship. Now, they give you a lanyard for it to go around your neck free of charge. That comes with the price of a cruise. Uh, if you want something more decorative, Ricky bought one of these little clips that you can clip on your pocket or on your jacket or wherever you want. Uh, I just wore the lanyard. Sometimes I would stuff the whole thing in my pocket, and it still works. Now, what this little medallion does is it's a way of Discovery Princess, the ship, whatever ship you're on, identifying you. So when you get on or off the ship, it takes the place of a stateroom key card. So anytime you get on or off the ship, they're going to scan that little medallion. Uh, they also have the ability to kind of know where you are on the ship at any time. So it's, it's contact tracing, basically. And I think this probably grew out of the need during COVID for contact tracing, and Princess has just taken that to a, a different level. So every room is outfitted with a what looks kind of like a little iPad next to the door of your stateroom. And as you approach your stateroom, it identifies your medallion and it unlocks the door for you. So you don't even have to swipe a card or anything. And if, if it doesn't unlock, you can actually touch the medallion to the screen and get it to unlock. And that seems to work very well. Uh, I found the medallion itself uh, 
really that technology seems to be pretty pretty sound. Now the Medallion Net also includes an app that goes on your smartphone. And this is where the system kind of starts to fall apart. Um, the app itself I found to be a little clunky. I found it to be overwhelming. There's so many choices, especially on the first page of the app, that you have to scroll through to find what you're looking for. Um, I think it could be designed better. The part of the app that shows you the daily activities that would kind of replace the patter uh, is, to me, very confusing. It's in a horizontal format that you have to kind of keep swiping, to, and then you have to swipe up and down and left to right, and it, it, it's just very confusing. I think most people do what we did. You just take a picture of the pattern that's in your room. Thank goodness they still print one, a daily uh, list of activities. In fact, we found ourselves just folding it up like we always did, put it in our pocket, and we had our list of activities. The app was way too hard to use for that purpose. Um, Ricky never could get the app to work on her iPhone. Uh, I have an iPhone 13 Pro. I didn't have any trouble getting the app to open and to work most of the time. There were a couple of times it hung up. I don't know if that's because of the ship's internal Wi-Fi. I do know that the, there appears to be some functions of this medallion system that appear to be working off of the Princess website, this central website somewhere. I'm not sure if that's true, but I know when I scan a QR code, uh, say in a bar or a lounge to get the menu to come up, down at the bottom it says princess.com. That led me to believe it's trying to go to the Princess website to get that information. That may not be the case, but let me know. If you know how this system works as far as looking up menus and things, put it in the comments down below because it appeared to me like it was trying to go out over the internet. And in Alaska, the internet is virtually non-existent most of the time. This is not Princess's fault, uh, the Alaska issue. Uh, it has to do with where satellites are located in space. But no matter where we were, uh, we never had good Wi-Fi or good internet. Now, I don't know if this is just an Alaska thing, but I've heard some other people uh, on the internet, on YouTube, talking about they're having problems with the medallion net in other parts of the world as well. Not Nothing to do with being north of a certain uh, latitude or anything like that. This needs to be dealt with. It needs to be addressed, and uh, I'm sure Princess is aware of it, and I'm sure they're going to do something about it. And for some people, it's no big deal. Now, let's, let me talk again about the app a little bit and about some of the things on these big screens around the ship. I think Princess could, could benefit from taking the... Uh, the approach that less is more. There's a lot of things they put into this that were really unnecessary. It's kind of fluff. For example, you can go to one of these big screens located on the ship and touch your medallion to it, and you can set up what they call a, uh, a follow me or a, I don't know, it's like your spirit animal. I don't know what it is. I can't remember what they call it. Uh, Ricky tried to get it to work. We were down in, on deck seven at the medallion area. She tried to set up her turtle with a certain color, and you can set your colors, and you can set all kinds of different things. And I think the idea is, no matter where you are on the ship, if you walk up to one of these screens, your little, your little spirit animal, your little turtle will show up on the screen. You know, it, that something that would be cool for an eight-year-old or a nine-year-old, it's kind of a gimmick. Um, I don't know that it's really necessary. So a lot of time and effort and energy went into stuff like that, and we couldn't even get it to work. So I, I wish Princess would have focused more on the things that really matter. Uh, how can I find a, a person you know, that I'm sailing with on the ship, which it does, and it does do a very good job of that. So if, if I open up the app and I want to find Ricky and she's located at a bar on a completely different deck, I can find her, I can even message her, I can go, you know, locate her. That works very well. Uh, they also have the ability for you to use the app to order a drink or order food, no matter where you are on the ship. You can be sitting out of the pool, you can be in one of the lounges, and we tested this. We put it to the test. We went up and sat up in the shopping area on Deck 7, and we ordered a drink. 
Okay, we're going to try to order a drink from the shops at Princess here on Deck 7. I'm here with Ricky. And supposedly, because of this medallion, they can find us anywhere on the ship and they know where we want our drinks delivered. There you go. I'm going to let her have it. Thank you. Wow. Thank you very much. Okay, so it took about eight minutes to get that drink. Ricky got her mimosa. She's happy. I'd say the ordering through medallion works. That's pretty cool. There are some really cool things about this medallion technology. It just needs to be perfected, and I think it needs to be pared down to the really essential things. That's just my take. Now, I mentioned earlier that the fitness center was located on deck 17 aft, and it's very nicely equipped. Lots of workout, lots of cardio equipment, lots of treadmills, uh, all the different weight machines. It looked like they have a very nice pre-course setup with uh, the circuit training machines. They have free weights. So that's very nice. What I found a little unusual is that the fitness center is located on 17 aft while the spa is located on deck 5 forward. They put the fitness center just about as far away from the spa as they could. So if you have your workout and you want to go right from the workout into the steam room or into a sauna or something like that, or a hot tub uh, or a thalassotherapy, you're going to have to go all the way down to deck five, all the way forward. So I was, I was surprised. Usually you'll find a spa pretty close to the fitness center. Now, the Lotus Spa, I did have a chance to try a couple of things. I did, I did have a massage scheduled, and I decided to change it at the last minute because I realized when I left home I'd forgotten to trim my nails, and I couldn't take nail clippers with me because of TSA. So I really needed a manicure. And I, I told Ricky, I said, you know, rather than getting a massage, which I've had a hundred times on cruise ships, why don't I change it to a manicure, maybe even get a manicure and a pedicure? I know it's not the most manly thing to do, but I did. I changed it. They were very accommodating. They got me right in. First day, I go in that morning. I sit down. They put me in this nice, beautiful massage chair that has all these electronic massages. She puts my feet in warm water, and she's massaging my calves, and she does the, I know it's gross, it trims the toenails and all that. And uh, that was very, very nice. And then after that, she took me over to a table and she starts working on my hands and she's got lotion all over my hands and, and, and they're warm and, and she gets her little buffer out and buffs them. And I'm not paying attention. We're talking. A nice lady. Her name's Althea. Very nice lady from Jamaica. Did a great job. Uh, and then she's obviously, she's finished. Uh, I, I gave her a nice, I thought, a nice tip and um, said goodbye. And I, re I walked out of there and I realized, wait a minute, she didn't trim my fingernails. She buffed them and she kind of filed them a little bit, but she never got the clippers out and clipped my fingernails. So I, I didn't realize it until after I left because we were busy talking. I wasn't paying attention. I get back to the room and I tell Ricky, I said, I got my manicure and my pedicure, but she didn't clip my nails. Well, Ricky's response was, well, did you tell her to? Did you ask her to trim your nails? And I thought, well, it's a pedic it's a manicure. Isn't that what they do? So let me know in the comments down below. If you get a manicure and a pedicure, do you expect your nails to be trimmed? Or should you? do you have to tell them to trim your nails? She even asked me if I wanted nail polish when I first got there. And I'm not quite that far down the road yet. So I, I said, no, thank you. And I just wanted the, uh, but I did want my nails trimmed. So anyway, I don't know if that's standard practice. Maybe she forgot. Maybe she got distracted and halfway through and we were talking so much. Maybe she just forgot about it. I don't know. Anyway, uh, it's a beautiful spa area. The uh, th There's also a, a thermal suite called the Enclave. And I did have a day pass to the Enclave to give it a try. Really enjoyed it. Nice thalassotherapy pool. Uh, warm water. It's got a lot of different jets that you can focus on different parts of your body if you have some sore muscles or whatever. Uh, beautiful steam room. Probably the nicest steam room I've seen on a cruise ship. Very, it's, They call it a hammam. It's kind of a Turkish bath type steam room. Uh, very, very, uh, very hot, which I like, and very steamy, which I like. 
enclave itself, the entire thermal suite, I thought was actually kind of small. I was surprised for a ship this size. Uh, it really looks like it's set up to hold about 12 people because there's 12 uh, heated relaxation beds. Uh, it, there's also a dry sauna, very nice, just like the steam room, one of the nicer ones I've seen. There's another, what they call, uh, I think there's a name for it. Uh, they called it a mild steam room with, or I think it was like aromatherapy. I didn't go into that, that room. They have plenty of towels available. Uh, they have ice water available if you need ice water. Uh, they do provide you with a very nice robe and slippers in the changing room. Anyway, the Enclave is $49 a day per person. A better deal, though, is to get the week-long pass. You can get a full week pass for $149. So what about accommodations? Well, we had a standard balcony cabin or stateroom on Deck 10, which is the Carib Deck. Um, Princess names all their decks. And it was a connecting room, which we weren't too excited about because we've had them in the past and they can get very noisy. But nevertheless, we were lucky on this cruise. We had a very nice, quiet couple next door. Uh, our stateroom is located aft on deck 10, uh, very close to the aft elevators, but not so close that you could hear the elevators or people standing around talking or anything like that. So it was actually not a bad location at all. Now, I'm going to do a separate video on our stateroom, our, because otherwise this video is going to be an hour and a half long. So I'm going to do a completely separate video where we review in detail our standard balcony stateroom on Discovery Princess. So make sure you subscribe, click the notification bell so that you don't miss that video. It should be out in a few days. And I'll also add links to this video once that video is released. If you look in the description of this video, if that video is out by the time you watch this, those links will be there. If not, subscribe and you'll be notified when we come out with that video. Okay, so let's talk about the bars and the lounges. Now, there's plenty of places on this ship to get a drink. I'm going to start at the top of the ship, work my way down, just kind of tell you what all the bars are and what they're like. Uh, deck 17 forward is the topmost bar. That is the retreat bar, which is at the retreat pool, which is an adult-only space. There are three bars on deck 16. Now, around the pools, you've got uh, midship, you've got the one called the mix. I believe it's forward. And then you've got the sea view bar aft. I think I'm getting that right. And both of them are large. They serve the entire pool deck area on 16 and 17. Deck 16 aft, you'll find the wake view bar. Now let's go inside the ship on deck 7. You've got Bellini's, which is a really upscale, although small, bar. And of course, Bellini's overlooks the piazza. So if there's entertainment down below, you can hear the music and what's going on in the piazza on deck five. Now, if you move aft on deck seven, you're going to come to Princess Live Cafe, which is also a full service bar. And if you go even further aft on Deck 7, you have the Crown Grill Bar, which is one of my favorite bars. I really like the seating and the atmosphere at that Crown Grill Bar. Now, if you go down to Deck 6, the biggest bar on Deck 6, one of the biggest on the ship, is the Crooner's Bar. You're going to find Crooner's Bars on every Princess ship. One of the places we spent most of our time, which was at the Take 5 bar on deck six, which is right next to the casino. And uh, this is a very nice lounge, very comfortable. And we found ourselves there quite a few evenings because it at night or between, say, 430 and six or 630. I can't remember the times. And it varies depending on if you're in port or not. Uh, it becomes what they call the Elite Lounge. Now, the Elite Lounge is a perk if you're a Platinum member or above, which I am Platinum, and Ricky's now Platinum. She This, this cruise put her over Platinum. So this is a really nice uh, little perk because they set up this beautiful buffet. Uh, of course, you have full drink service. So it was a very, very nice setup. We really appreciate it. I think if you don't have a drink package, I think they actually have some drink specials if you're in the Elite Lounge in the evening. So 
uh, that was nice. The Take 5 Bar, and they have jazz music at night, and the jazz musicians in there were incredible. I mean, really, really good jazz music. Now, if you go down to Deck 5, you'll find the Good Spirits Bar, which is a large space right off the piazza, and on the opposite side of the ship, you've got the uh, Salty Dog Gastro Pub, which, although it specializes in beers, Again, it's a full-service bar. They'll get you anything you want in that bar. If they don't have it, they'll walk over to Good Spirits and get it for you. Now, what about the drink quality? Well, Ricky's drink of choice is the Lemon Drop Martini, and she had several of them on this cruise. There was a little inconsistency between the different bars, but generally her Lemon Drops were all very good. She had one or two that weren't quite as sweet as she likes, but you find that on any ship. One bartender, another bartender, they're all going to be slightly different. My experience, on the other hand, was not so good. I am a Crown Royal aficionado. I also drink Canadian Club. Both of them Canadian uh, blended whiskeys. They didn't have Crown Royal or Canadian Club in any of the bars or lounges. They also didn't have Seagram's. So there was no Canadian blended whiskey on the ship, which I was very disappointed about. This apparently is a problem in the Carnival family, because when we were on Carnival Mardi Gras last year, they also didn't have Crown Royal or Canadian Club. I think one of the bars, though, did have Seagram's. We had to go back to the, uh, I think it's Fahrenheit 555. We had to go back there, the Steakhouse Bar, to get Seagram's. But they did have it. And I don't understand it. We talked to two or three people on the ship that know about this, and they all claim the same thing. It has to do with supply chain. Uh, it's a supply chain issue in their, uh, that's their stated view. Uh, but it doesn't matter. If, if you pay uh, five, I don't know, what is it, $59 a day for a drink package, and, and you look at their menus online, and you see Crown Royal or Canadian Club, and that's your drink, you might be disappointed when you get on board the ship, and you've paid this much money for a drink package, and you find out they don't have your drink. They also didn't have Maker's Mark, Knob Creek, or Buffalo Trace. I was willing to step down to one of those uh, to get by. And they didn't have any of those either. So, And I don't know what other uh, brands they didn't have, but I'm sure there's others I just didn't ask. So I ended up just drinking red wine or a glass of sparkling wine, something I really don't normally like. So anyway, that's, that's my only complaint. Uh, I don't know if it's anything they can do anything about at this time. I do know I can go to my local liquor store and I can buy Canadian Club and I can buy Crown Royal and I can buy Seagram's. So I'm not exactly sure what the issue is, uh, why Carnival can't seem to resolve this, and I'll take them at their word that it's something to do with the supply chain. As for the service in the bars, I felt like overall it was very good. Uh, we don't have any complaints with the wait staff uh, in the bars. I thought they did a good job. Uh, we even had a situation when we were in Victoria, Canada, where Canada has this weird rule where some of the bars have to be closed while the ship's in port. I don't know if I've seen that anywhere else in the world that we've cruised. We Even we wanted to have a drink when we were docked in Victoria. Our bar waiter, we were at a bar that was closed, and he offered to go to another bar to get our drink. I'm not sure how that works. I don't know what difference it makes. But apparently, uh, he was able to do that, and he did that for us. It took a little bit longer, but we did get our, our drinks. So uh, service was good. One of the cool things about Medallion, as I mentioned earlier, it doesn't really matter where you are in the ship. You don't even have to be in a bar. You can use your app on your phone to order a drink anywhere on the ship, and they'll find you and bring it to you, even in your stateroom. If you want a cocktail at 9 o'clock at night or 2 in the afternoon in your stateroom, maybe you want a Mai Tai in your stateroom on your balcony, you just order it using the medallion. I, I know somebody's going to ask in the comments down below, do I think the drink package is worth it? And uh, it's like I said, it's $59 or $59.95 a day for the plus drink package. And that gets you any drink up to $12. So, and that's a lot of, there's a lot to choose from within that price range. There are some premium uh 
cocktails, premium brands that get up in the $18 range. And if you're into that sort of thing, I think you can get the premium drink package for $79 or $79.95 a day. Uh, you check the Princess website and it'll tell you all the details on the drink package. Whether or not it's a good deal is going to depend on how much you drink. There were only two production shows on this seven night cruise, which I thought was a little unusual. I thought they usually had three on a seven night cruise, and I think they probably do. It could be they're still trying to come back from the whole COVID thing and they just haven't gotten everything back in, in full service yet. Uh, but they did have, uh, we did go to the first production show, which is called Spotlight Bar, because we'd never seen it before. Very good show. Uh, we sat right down in the very front so we could get some good pictures. We can't, you cannot video in Princess uh, sh production shows because of copyright, so I wasn't able to get any video. I think we counted like 10 different dancers and four vocalists, and the Dance, the dance numbers were very good. The storyline of Spotlight Bar to me was a little confusing. I didn't quite get the story, but the songs and the music and the, the vocalists were good. The dancers were incredible. So it's an enjoyable show. Now, they also have a show called Rock Opera. We've seen Rock Opera before. I think we saw it on Majestic Princess just a little bit less than a year ago. Another excellent show. So they do have good entertainment. They did have some other entertainers on board, like a, I think they had a musician one night, They uh, uh, like an Elton John impersonator. They had a uh, magician one night. So they, they had some other acts during the week, and we did not go to those shows. We unfortunately spent that time in the casino, which is a very nice casino and was never overly crowded. We found the casino to be pretty friendly as far as the, the slot machines. We play the slot machines. And what's cool is you can use your medallion, uh, medallion to order a drink if you're playing a slot machine. And I did that one day. I ordered a, a glass of wine uh, using the app, and they just bring it to you at the slot machine. You don't have to go to a casino bar or anything like that. We found all of the musicians on board to be very good. Uh, and they have lounge acts all over the ship. So everywhere you go to have a cocktail in the evening, you might have a piano player at Crown Grill. You might have, or there might be a guitarist. I mean, there's just it's all over the place. So um, some very, very good music. They had these two violinists that played at the piazza one day. And I swear, they were amazing. They played, two violins played the theme to Game of Thrones and it was incredible. I mean, it it was it was just it was amazing. Uh, they also have lectures as far as activities uh, during the day, especially on sea days. Lots of activities. You know, they got the trivia, they got the game shows. Princess is kind of known for their yes no game show, the marriage game they play. I can't remember all the names of them. Sometimes we go to them, sometimes we don't. We usually go to trivia. Okay, uh, toughest topic to cover is food and dining because everybody has different tastes. It's the hardest thing for us to talk about. And it's so in detail, and there's so many different dining options on Discovery Princess that we're going to do a completely separate video. Remember, once again, if you want to see our take on all the different restaurants, uh, we're going to get into it, but you're going to have to wait and watch the separate video. Now, let's talk about the crew and the level of service that we experienced on this cruise. They were short-staffed in some areas, but it wasn't too obvious. They did a very good job overall. All the service we had was good. Everybody was pleasant. Everybody was willing to help. Uh, very friendly. Our stateroom attendant was amazing. Uh, he did a great job, took care of everything we asked for. But all in all, great crew, very friendly very pleased with the service that we experienced on Discovery Princess. I mentioned earlier that our Alaska cruise was a Seattle round trip. Now, Princess offers several different Alaska itineraries. They do have some probably better itineraries from an Alaska perspective, from being able to see more of Alaska. If you do their north to south Anchorage, to Seattle or Anchorage to Vancouver, something like that, uh, because you don't have to turn around and come back to the same port. So you're going to have more uh, 
glacier experiences. They offer some 10 and 11 day. Uh, if you're really, we've been to Alaska, I think this is our eighth time. So we've been to most of the places in Alaska, if not all. But I think if you want to really immerse yourself in Alaska, get the best glacier experiences, look for uh, one of their itineraries that offers College Fjord or Hubbard Glacier or Glacier National Park. I think you're going to get a better glacier experience. Now, we did visit Dawes Glacier, which is up Endicott Arm. We did a sail up Endicott Arm uh, to Dawes Glacier, which was very nice, very impressive, and it was a, a beautiful morning we got to spend doing that. Uh, we started off in Seattle. We went to Ketchikan, was our first stop. Ketchikan is very touristy, lots of shops, lots of excursion opportunities. We did a photo safari excursion, something we've never done before, which I thought was was good. And you go to various spots near Ketchikan where you can get really good photographs. They do offer you quite a bit of information, or our guide did, on how to use a smartphone to get very good pictures. And so most of the pictures I took were with our iPhone. Uh, we actually did a whale watching tour in Juneau, and uh, it was also very nice. Uh, we enjoyed it. It was not the best whale watching trip we've had. We didn't, the whales, we did see humpback whales, but they were pretty far away and it was hard to get good pictures. I think it's a little late in the season for the best whale watching. I may be wrong about that. If you know more about that, please put in the comments down below. Now, our cruise originally was supposed to go to Skagway, and Skagway is another one of those very touristy destinations, lots of shore excursion opportunities. And we originally had a ATV tour booked. We found out just a week or two before the cruise that uh, Princess was going to change the itinerary and go to Sitka instead because they had had some, I think there'd been some rock slides there in Skagway. There weren't as many shore excursion options that we were interested in in Sitka as there were Skagway. They did have an ATV tour and we tried to book that and we were just too late. So we were not able to do the ATV tour like we had wanted to do in, in Skagway originally. We decided to stay on board, use that opportunity to take more pictures and videos of the ship. Uh, it was pouring down rain in Sitka all day long, so we actually ended up playing trivia most of the day. Now, I mentioned that Princess offers 10 and 11 day itineraries. If you really want to immerse yourself in Alaska, that's probably the best option. Uh, you can also do like a three or four day add-on. I think it's three or four, maybe it's two, three, four day add-on to go to Denali Park. If you've got the time and you can spend the money, do it. We have not done it yet. We did on our own rent a car and drive to the Princess Lodge one day, but it's not the same. Go on their train and do the train experience to Denali Park. Stay at the Princess Lodge. I've heard nothing but rave reviews about Denali Park and uh, this Princess Lodge. So I highly recommend that you check that out. If you're going to Alaska anyway and you're going to spend the money and you have the time and you have the resources, do that add-on Denali Park experience. So what is my final assessment, and I'd say our final assessment, conclusion on Discovery Princess and Princess Cruises? I think the uh, medallion is a cool feature. It certainly puts Princess at the very forefront of technology in the cruise industry. I think the little medallion is a great idea. I think the medallion net being billed as the best Wi-Fi at sea might be a little exaggerated for now. Uh, I'm sure that Princess will address this. I'm sure they're aware of it, and I'm sure they'll address it. Uh, I think the medallion app for the uh, for your uh, smartphone w does definitely needs to be tweaked and maybe have some new user interface done there. But overall, I like the direction of the technology. It's certainly the most technologically advanced ships we've been on as far as the use of technology. So that's pretty impressive. As far as dining, I think main dining offered fewer choices than what I have seen in the past on some ships. Uh, we did only eat in the main dining room one evening. 
but I was a little surprised at how few choices there were. We did look at the menus every day. We had a good experience in the main dining room. Service was very good. And uh, special dining, I would say, was good to very good. And we'll talk about more of that in my dining review video. I'll give you all the details of where we ate, what we ate, and what our experience was like. Princess just continues to be one of our favorite big mega ship cruise lines. It's just a step above your typical mega ship mass market experience. You still get that romantic feeling of being on a princess ship. It's just really, really nice. I hope they're able to address the issue with the Canadian uh, whiskeys. Uh, I think that uh, and it's not just Canadian whiskey. There were some bourbons and other products that weren't available as well. Hopefully they're going to be able to get that sorted out because on a premium cruise line, you expect to have those sorts of things. This is an excellent ship. It's a beautiful new ship. I think you are going to love it if you are booked on Discovery Princess. And I want to hear your experiences. If you've been on this ship, tell me where I'm going wrong. Tell me if uh, you think my viewpoints are way off base or if you agree with them and any other things that you'd like to share about your experience on Discovery Princess or your Alaska cruise, please. That's what the comments are for. I'm really excited to see their newest ship, this new Sphere class ship that they just announced yesterday. I have friends that won't go on anything but a Princess cruise. They absolutely love Princess. And I see why. It's a great cruise line. So I'm looking forward to seeing you again in my stateroom video, uh, review video, and food and dining review. And we're going to do a little video on the sanctuary and talk about why I think this is something you need to do because I think it's one of the best features on a princess ship. Princess has some things that nobody else has. Thanks for joining today. If you liked this video, please take a second, click that like button. It really does help out our channel. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notification bell. And we'll see you on the next Cruise Report Review.